So first of all, despite the impacts of COVID-19, the city was hard at work this past year. Let's see, the city was able to work with our vulnerable businesses, establishments, resources, and providing staff outreach to those affected by COVID-19. In par partnership with the Chamber of Commerce, the city also assisted our local businesses in obtaining grant funds and creating tables on Main Street, which is a huge success. Well, hopefully the worst is behind us. In light of the success of tables on Main Street, the city is extending the partial closure of David Street. And that's still under discussion to see how long it will stay closed. But uh, staff is in the process of, of evaluating possible permanent solutions for the future, which will allow expanded outdoor dining. Uh, the city council recently set aside $10,000 in the American Rescue Plan funds to assist local businesses and nonprofits in ensuring all local organizations are contacted and informed of stimulus grants, programs, and funds, as there are millions of dollars available from the state. Okay. Let's see, staff and counselor in the final stage is completing a comprehensive strategic plan that includes categories such as art, culture, entertainment, a connected and healthy community, community vitality, and public safety. This plan coincides perfectly with our new two-year budget process and helps provide measurable goals and objectives over the health or the course of the next two years, and also, of course, helps uh, the prioritize the city council direction. In April, council adopted our very first legislative platform, which articulates the city's position through policy statements on issues that are currently or anticipated to be the focus of future legislation by the state or federal government. We're in the midst of a truly once in a lifetime opportunity where the city will be in the recipient of approximately $5.6 million uh, one-time stimulus funds to help lift our city and the community out of the effects of COVID-19. Now, some initial council, um, uh, some initial council approvals, per, approved uses of the funds include small business and nonprofit outreach and reduced and waived fees. Um, I do want to mention that our PIO management analyst, Jonathan Royas, recently got notified that uh, because of the, there was some real realization of some of the ARP funds uh, from city to cons cons conserve. We all observe, I'm sorry, I can't read my own writing. Um, some of the larger cities see a slight decline in their projections, but our projection shows that we will be getting an increase of $7.1 million. And Dan Singer asked me if he thought we could spend it. And I said, collectively, I think we can. <laughs> By filling an open position in the city manager's office, we have been able to better focus on grant opportunities which have materialized already in a $300,000 Cal OES power safety grant which will purchase generators to the city hall, the police department, provide power to the community center, and critical radio infrastructure for the police department. Also continue the expansion of city public outreach, including our new, our new monthly video newsletter, which you may have seen put in on collaboration with the Chamber of Commerce. The new two-year budget process. This will help focus our goals in relation to our new two-year strategic plan and also save staff time and so they can be able to work on other important projects in the community. As mentioned earlier, in addition to some of the initial council approved uses of stimulus funds, council is also setting aside funds to help assist households who have had trouble with utility payments during the COVID-19 pandemic. So please stay tuned for more information on the program in our community. The county has done a great job in providing grant assistance to many of our local organizations and businesses and even recently announced a third set of grant funds. However, in order to qualify, many of them needed copies of their business licenses to apply, so the finance team has been assisting with those requests. The city has adjusted the sewer rates for the residents utilizing a winter average consumption model to help residents put more money back into their pockets. First quarter, 24.3% reduction in major crime. And uh, so this is uh, from our, uh, the police department, and you saw your Chief Travis Walker was introduced earlier. 
Our new police chief recently completed the first three months with the city, and the great news is that the first quarter there have been a 24.3% reduction in major crime. More information will be provided to the community shortly, but the city, along with Ventura County, now has the technology to place or to allow for text 911. One more way to help keep our community safe, so stay tuned for more information on this great new feature. In March, we welcomed our newest canine, Doc. After 240 hours of training, Doc, a 20 month old German Shepherd, and Senior Officer Gates are now faithfully serving the community. Doc is certified in patrol and narcotics detection. For those of you that went to the canine fundraiser yesterday, you were able to see the two canines in action there. Homeless engagement. By partnering with Ventura County Health Care Agency and the Ventura County Medical Center, we are able to provide backpack medicine services to the homeless population in our community. We are doing this to ensure our homeless receive the necessary social services and medical care they need. The emergency services coordinator position, which is created, which was newly created, is to assist with training of city staff, education, and outreach with the community and ensuring that the city is prepared to respond to all hazard events that we face here in our community. Earlier, Greg Barnes, our Parks and Recreation Director, was introduced to the audience. Santa Paula Crowd once again made a visible difference in our community this year, and the efforts paid off tremendously. Santa Paula Beautiful took place on May 1st and was truly remarkable today with almost 300 volunteers participating from our community. Our volunteers clean up over six tons of trash and debris and help to beautify our city in such an amazing way. Last week, city officials and a small group of community members safely came together for a belated Arbor Day celebration. The city planted seven trees as a symbol of the city's commitment to creating a greener future. Each tree was sponsored by the community members and organizations, including the Santa Paula Theater Center, Santa Paula, Health, Santa Paula Chamber of Commerce, Palacio Event Center, Leslie and John Nichols, and American Bloom. These trees were planted at Ebal Park. This past year, the city found unique ways to engage our residents despite the challenges of the pandemic. The Parks and Recreation Department created the first ever drive through Santa Tours and Easter scavenger hunts. Events which were widely successful along with virtual family game nights and the like. Senior Meals delivered over 55,000 meals to seniors this past year, home delivery and drive through and celebrated Older Americans Month by hosting a senior barbecue lunch with help from the St. Paul Police Department who were there, who were there and they, they were the grill masters during the event. And also the police department were the chefs for the Cannon fundraiser. There's also been a conversion of all lights to LED along the bike trail, which provides a better experience to our community, better safety, and eventually cost savings uh, with reduction and of course the newer technology. I think you've all seen it in progress, but in March, they completed the wood repair and the repainting of the depot. Our community and economic development director, Jane Mason, under his leadership, they also expanded outdoor dining into the public right away. And as you heard, there's a possibility that they may continue. The city's actively working to see if we can make that a permanent thing. They also assisted business, businesses such as Anna Cider in opening during COVID. A little bit about harvest. Phase one, near projection complete, completion and 308 of the 586 homes sold. The entire project will bring the new sales tax, property tax, and utility users as the city's population increases with over 1,500 homes approved for new development. Under commercial development, there's 60,000 square foot warehouse being completed at 126 in Todd Road. The new tenants will help to bring 20 plus new jobs to the city of Santa Paul. There were 743 construction permits processed. 
They closed 95 code compliance cases, and you've heard of the Triangle property, which is east of the city, south of, of East Carolina and Lamanera, I'm, I'm sorry, Harvest. Uh, the council has received feedback on this, and soon the city-owned piece of property, which will be the gateway intersection to the east end of the city, and to let passersbys know that uh, something special is upon them. All right, what lies ahead? Housing element. We'll provide an analysis of Santa Paula's housing needs and the policies necessary to provide for those needs coming in October 2021. Harvest, another 500 plus homes are on the, in the, on the horizon in downtown. We'll help to provide an additional 28 residential units downtown now that they change the ordinance to allow for residential and commercial areas. The TBID, or the Property Business Improvement District, downtown in collaboration with the Chamber and the City, are in the process of evaluating the downtown with a third party to assess how to enhance the downtown and our public spaces. This problem, process will assist with, with revitalize, revitalization of the downtown, providing community events and possibly expanding outdoor dining. Our public works director, Pete Sonnier, is in the room with us, and under his leadership, we have the paving management plan. It's well underway, and I know it's still an issue, and there's still a couple of years left before you know, they, they get to the major projects. But at Peck and Faulkner Road, rehabilitation work on three of the street sections of Faulkner Road and Peck Road, including reconstruction of the railroad, or I'm sorry, roadway pavement, curb, ramps, and cross gutters, grinding existing pavement, crack ceiling and asphalt pavement overlay as well as other incidental work related. Harvard Boulevard, this is a big one, uh, may impact a lot of people, but this project is slated for uh, this summer 2021 and it will consist of improvement of 1.7 miles of Harvard Boulevard from Peck Road to 10th Street. The project scope includes street improvements addressing 650,000 square feet of pavement, curb ramp construction, utility improvements addressing and replacing 9,000 linear feet of 12-inch water mains and 7,000 linear feet of 36-inch sewer main. The project planning cost estimate is 7.34 million, and we're in the midst of seeking additional funding support from Senator Feinstein's office. So again, that will impact Harvard Boulevard for at least a short period of time. And lastly, because I know it's time to move on to the awards, but the solid weight franchise due diligence study report, after a month long resident satisfaction survey, council was presented with a report last week in preparation for our Athens contract, which is expiring in May of 2022. Resident survey responses were overall very favorable in support of Athens with over 70% of respondents being satisfied or very satisfied with Athens service. As a result, council recommended staff move forward with, with commencing franchise negotiations with Athens in the next 90 days. Look at that one. Thank you. As I mentioned before, if you have any questions about anything that was presented tonight, was a lot in a short period of time, please don't hesitate to reach out to the council, to staff, uh, for more information, detailed information to answer any of your questions. And again, I'd like to close again by congratulating the recipients of the 2021 Chamber of Commerce Awards.